Good morning. <clears throat> Today is Saturday, January 9th, 2021. Today is our scheduled yoga therapy class through Satik Space Yoga and Healing Studio which we have been doing for a long, long time. Today's topic is yoga therapy, one breath at a time. So first, let's talk a little bit about, about breathing. What does it mean, one breath at a time? And what does yoga therapy has to do with the breathing? As all of you know, yoga is the word, anglicized version of a Sanskrit word called yoga, which means union. It's a union of your body, mind, and spirit. It's a philosophy. Philosophy is called the sutras, small aphorisms, 196 of them, and 193 of them out of 196 is to quiet down your mind. It's primarily, it causes the control of the chattering of your mind. It is a practice called eight limb practice. Yam, social restraint, niyam, personal restraint, asana, poses, physical poses, pranayama, voluntary regulated breathing, pratahara, control of your five senses, the haran is a focus, the hand is a meditation, and samadhi is a union of body, mind, and spirit. We use all the philosophies, we use all the eight limbs as a part of the yoga therapy, also including well, the mudras, the hand gestures, bandhas, the locks, we call it spiritual locks. Kriyas are called physical cleansing of our body. And Ayurveda, Ayurveda is the traditional system of healing from India and the philosophy of Ayurveda. And all this integrated, which is called Yog Chikitsa. Yog Chikitsa means yog therapy. In the practice of yoga therapy, Primarily, we use our asana, asana which is an external and internal alignment. It aligns our physical body, aligns our bones and joints, aligns our muscles, aligns our posture, and most important alignment is to keep your spine straight. Merudanda achal, mind straight. Next important posture is your a relaxation response. Able to be in an asana, what you also in English call poses, is called stillness, sthiram, happiness, shukham. Asana is the poses. Each pose you have to be very happy and you have to be still. And each pose, even I'm sitting in a chair, this is my pose, and see, I'm keeping my spine straight. So once your physical body has that relaxation, physical body is comfortable, physical body doesn't have this twitching, the fasciculation, then you enter into your a relaxing breath. In voluntary regulated breathing, first practice you do, breathing out longer than breathing in. Lung is like a balloon, it has six liter capacity, and lung needs 1.5 liter, keep the lung inflated. This 4.5 liter is called a vital capacity, which we can exchange voluntarily. Normally in our 
unconscious or subconscious breathing we only breathe about 500 cc which is 0.5 liter so you have about 80 to 90 percent reserved pulmonary function so lung function out of this 4.5 liter as you say 0.5 liter is a daily or normal exchange we are doing we are able to breathe in extra inhalation for inspiratory capacity almost three liters and we can exhale remove voluntarily about another liter so you have a four liter plus 0.5 4.5 liter which you can exchange which is called your vital capacity now when you have a voluntary control over your breathing you develop a phenomena which is called a unconscious to the conscious mind. What does it mean? Breathing is a function of the autonomic nervous system. It comes from your brainstem. That is your subconscious unconscious breathing. I'm sleeping, I'm breathing through my brainstem. But I'm awake, alert, I can breathe out a, low, a large amount of air and I can breathe in a big amount of air in. This is the function of my cortex, the part of the brain called cortex and this breath is a connector between your unconscious and conscious. Basically it is connecting your body and mind. So breath is a connector between your body and mind. When a breath becomes effortless, when breathing rate comes down, your mind quiets down. When your mind quiets down, you enter into a state of meditation. And meditation is a state where my body starts to produce any kind of medication you need for your healing body produces our beta blockers, body produces our ACE inhibitor, body produces all the statins you can think about, body produces all the antibiotics we take. It's an amazing phenomena which we call the healing power of our body. Now what is the importance of your breath? Now say metaphorically uh, if you get an example that yoga therapy is like a, a pill, the medication you take in a pill form. The pill itself is your asana. That pill inside has a, an active ingredient. Just simply for an aspirin, aspirin is a pill. Inside the aspirin active gradient is your acetyl salicylic acid. That is your active ingredient. So the active ingredient in yoga therapy is your voluntary regulated breathing, which is called pranayama. Prana is a life force. It is a subtle energy which keeps us awake, alert, and alive. Breath is not the prana. Breath is the carrier of the prana. Metaphorically, breath is like electric cable and prana is like an electricity. 
So breath is carrying the prana from outside and taking it to the organ of healing is called pranic healing. So coming back into the metaphor again, the whole pill, the whole tablet is rasana. Active ingredient is your pranayama. And now comes the mechanism of action. Mechanism of action means how does this medication works in my body? That is your meditation. So the pill or tablet is the asana. The active ingredient inside is the pranayama, which is a voluntary regulated breathing to bring the prana inside the body to call pranic healing. And third is the mechanism of action is your meditation. So you can do all the asanas and what you're doing in the asanas, you are bringing a relaxation response, activation of the parasympathetic tone in our body and mind. But it's the effect of pranayama which starts doing the healing and at the state of meditation, that is a mechanism of action and the healing takes place. So today we'll show you why we call the yoga therapy is a one breath at a time. Think about it. What is our life? Life is between an inhalation and exhalation. What is the word we use when a person is dying? We'd say the person expired. Have the person last breath comes out. So I have so much of an interest in breathing. I was visiting the <coughs> in Detroit, the Henry Ford Museum. Henry Ford Museum has a test tube, and the test tube says last breath of Henry Ford. So when you expire, what happens? You stop breathing, your lung function stops. When your lung function stops, your heart function stops. When your heart function stops, your brain function stops. When your brain function stops, all the cellular function stops. And the person is pronounced dead. Now, you know, and I know very well, suppose a person is brain dead and we are going to do a organ harvest for transplantation. What does it mean by organ harvest? That there is no chance of any recovery for this person and family gave a consent. Yes, you can take their kidneys, you can take the liver, take the heart, for transplanting into a, another person, very deadly, sickly person who needs it. And how do we do it? We put the person on a respirator, ventilator. We do the mechanical ventilation. That means we take over the function of the lung with the machine. When a function of the lung is taken over with the machine, then your heart continues to work, brain is already dead, brain is dead, all the tissues starts to work, and the transplant team start harvesting the organ. So it's like absolutely clear. So this is absolutely clear in our medical science the importance of the lung, importance of the breathing. So even if you think we have, say, uh, our disease, disease, we call it disease, D-I-S space E-A-S-E, disease. Our disease, say, uh, 
in pancreas or diabetes. So diabetes, we have what are called a cell called beta cell in the pancreas. Beta cell in the pancreas is not functioning properly. So able to do a voluntary regulated breathing can improve my heart function, improve my brain function, I can improve the function of my beta cell of the pancreas which will be beneficial for the person with the diabetes. Able to improve my pulmonary function or breathing function, I improve the function of my heart. It causes increase in the preload. Preload is amount of blood coming back into the heart, reduces afterload, which is called peripheral resistance. The heart can function better. So the heart function called ejection fraction gets better and better. And with the reduction of the peripheral resistance, your blood pressure starts to come down. It became a therapy for your hypertension. Alternate nostril breathing is a therapy for hypertension. Kapalbhati pranayam, breath of five. Abdominal lock, udhyani ban. Agni sar kriya, massaging all the abdominal contents. Powerful tool to reduce your blood sugar. Now, let's go ahead and start since many of us and I hear it all the time from my people that I cannot sit down in the ground, I cannot sit down in a, a cross-legged position, I cannot sit down in a uh, thunderbolt vajrasana and I just say only one thing, in stages impossible become possible and that is due to your neuroplasticity. Keep doing it in stages, every asan, every pranayama will come to you. For the practice of pranayama, first we do, we learn how to breathe out longer and longer and longer. Then we breathe in effortlessly as much as we can. Remember, whole pranayama practice is effortless. And effortless breathing voluntary control of breathing or breathing practices your that you will be able to talk you will be able to sing when you're doing pranayama practice so sitting in a chair again in a nice posture sitting in a chair and we'll do a breathing out longer than breathing in slowly and slowly we'll extend the time We'll do two second in, four second out, four second in, eight second out, eight second in, 16 second out, 10 second in, 20 second out. But this will be totally effortless. Why? Because the muscles of respiration, the muscles which help you breathe are called skeletal voluntary muscles which can be trained. So I'm here called pectoralis major, pectoralis minor, latissimus mus dorsi, you know, I mean, you can say all the anatomical muscles, but these muscles are trainable. With a trainable, like I can train my, this is biceps. I could do eight pounds, 10 pounds a short time, I can do 15 pounds, I'll be able to do 20 pounds, and we do it all with our breathing. You breathe in before a muscle works, breathe out when a muscle works, breathe in, breathe out. But also for your breathing, what you need, you need to do it a steps of breathing. And the steps are called, in sequence we'll do, the first one is called the bellows, Vastrika. 
Bellows is an active inhalation, active exhalation, which helps preparing our lung for further pranayama practice. Next will be called Kapalbhati Pranayam, breath of fire, active exhalation, passive inhalation. I'll explain all of them to you during our, when we start the practice. Third would be alternate nostril breathing, which is activation of the both side of our brain. Left nostril is controlled by right brain, right nostril is controlled by the left brain. Activation of the both side of the brain, so we can bring the balance in our body, mind and spirit, and health is defined as a balance of your body, mind, and spirit. What is the Ujjayi Pranayam? Ujjayi Pranayam is a victorious pranayam. You constrict the larynx, try to breathe in, which is called resistive inhalation. And I'll explain to you when you do it. We do a called Kongshal Pranayam, Shankho Pranayam, which is resistive exhalation. We do a very cooling Pranayam, called Sitali Pranayam, Siddhkari Pranayam, and Shadant Pranayam. Then for quieting down our mind, we do a called Bumblebee Breathing, Brahmri Pranayam. Then we do the Pranavho Pranayam. Pranavho Pranayam, A, U, Ma. A comes from lower part of the lung. U comes from the middle part of the lung. Ma comes from the upper part of the lung. And we'll do with a hand mudra. This is called a Chin Mudra, Chinmay Mudra, and Adhi Mudra. Another, this A, U, ma consists of the final called your Om Pranayam and it is called your Chakra Awakening Meditation, seven chakras and the seven vibrations which quiets down your mind for proper breathing. They're called Lam, Vam, Ram, Yam, Ham, Sham, O. Before we do a pranayama practice, we do a few asanas to a relaxation. And primary relaxation you do, the upper and lower part of the body, and we'll see very how quickly we do it and how easily can be done. First sitting in a chair, the, you start relaxing your hands, relaxing your wrist, relaxing your elbows, relaxing your shoulders relaxing your neck, upper part of the body, so that you're able to breathe effortlessly. Lower part is very easy, easily. Separate your toes, move your ankle a little bit, and then do a little eagle pose sitting in a chair. An eagle pose relaxes your knees and the hips and all the lower part of the body. So, if you're sitting in a chair, you can put your hands in front, and if you're practicing with me, let's start. And you'll see how easily the hand gets relaxed. This is called a baby fist. We learn from the babies. Baby will close a fist, put a thumb inside and close. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, Breathe out. Then what you learn to do slowly, do with your eyes closed. The eyes closed, breathe in, breathe out. Do it a few times, you feel a profound level of relaxation of the hand. Do the wrist, wrist gets relaxed like this. Extension, breathe in, flexion, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Do the eyes closed. Breathe in, breathe out. 
do your, your baby fist, Balu Mushti Mudra and Adi Mudra, put your hands together and slowly rotate your hands. Very nice way to relax. And always do your breathing. Breathe in before a muscle works, breathe out when the muscle is working. Elbow gets relaxed when you put the elbow in. This is called internal rotation. Elbow gets tightens up when you put it hand outside, it's called external rotation. Shoulder get relaxed when you put your hand down Shoulder gets tightens up when you put your shoulder high up. This is called a abduction. Adduction, a d duction, adduction relaxes your shoulder. Internal rotation of the shoulder, putting your hand inside, relaxes your shoulder. External rotation tightens up your shoulder. Neck, you do four positions of the neck for relaxation and you do with a prayer pose to the back. So the best way to do it, after you do your hands and wrist, you know when the hand gets relaxed, you will see, when you put your hands, all the fingers get separated. Your hands get so comfortable, all the pain goes away. For our life today, we are we live with the pain, chronic pain. More and more relaxed your bones and joints are, the pain goes away. Initially, it was very tight, it doesn't go. But hand gets relaxed, the finger goes in, finger just turns around. It's a fascinating feeling. Shoulder gets relaxed, put your hand on the shoulder, put your elbows together. Remember, wherever it comes, don't push yourself. For us, it comes here. Breathe out first, take a deep breath in, slowly rotate our shoulder. These are preparation for a pranayama practice. You don't sit down, close your eyes and say, I'm going to do a pranayama. You don't sit down and say, I'm going to do a meditation. Prepare your physical body first. Do it with breathing. Breathe in, breathe out. Balance it. Breathe in to the opposite side. Breathe out. You don't have to do too many. You sit down, do between five to ten each, and you do it every single day. It doesn't take much time. People ask me how long it takes. It doesn't take much time when you keep doing it with your eyes closed. You can hold your wrist to the top of your head. Breathe out first, take a deep breath in and slowly drop your head down. Same way, you can breathe in, breathing out, put your hand down behind your head. And in the same breathing cycle, bring your hand in the top. That's the way you extend your exhalation. Breathe in, and I always do it with my eyes closed. And when you are able to do this, you know, one of the very, very important disability we have today is called a frozen shoulder. It is a wonderful therapy for frozen shoulder when you incorporate your breath. I just got a request that will you do some session for a frozen shoulder? I said, okay. And remember, people are asking for the frozen shoulder because it's a very common, common phenomenon. A wonderful practice is called putting your hands in the back in a prayer pose. It's called prayer pose to the back. Spine is still straight. Take your hands all the way to the back. People are following me all the time. You have seen it. But I do it all the time. Hand in the back and slowly put a little prayer pose. And hand goes up in a prayer pose. Now, if you cannot do remember how to practice, you practice what your body is going to allow you to do. How do you know what the body is going to allow you to do? First, there will be no pain. If you develop any pain, that means you have 
lost the balance of your physical body in effortless breathing. Effortless breathing is, I'm sitting here with my hand to the back, I'm talking to you, I'm singing, I'm totally effortless. This is called a kosha model, the sheet. Foot sheet to the breath sheet. If you have imbalance in the foot sheet, it shows up in your breath. Wonderful practice. I'm sure you have all of you have seen me doing it before, but anyway, let me show you to one time, sitting down here, so you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. This is your prayer goes to the back. If this bothers you, come down. Find a place where you are comfortable with no pain and a effortless breathing. And this will allow you to do the pranayama practice. And when you keep it here, remember the stages of asana. First is the beginning, then is the stability, then is a profound relaxation. If you're able to stay here between five to 10 breaths, you develop a profound relaxation and you'll see your hand is going to go high up slowly and slowly, all the way high up and steady. And wherever you come up, you want to stay there and able to be comfortable. From here, stay in the hand in a prayer pose, you do the four position of your neck. Go to the back and the front, side to side, look all the way to the back from the left and right, then rotate your neck. Best way to do is, is to do with the sound of a bumblebee breathing on your exhalation. What it does, the bumblebee breathing has a frequency, your brain has a frequency, two frequency interact and it cancels. So let's do it one time so you can see. Clear pose to the back, neck all the way to the back, breathing. So breathe out in the middle first. Deep breath in, slowly put your neck to the back. And breathe out in a bumblebee breathing sound. Mm -hmm. Notice my exhalation became longer with this bumblebee breathing sound. So one more time, breathe out first, breathe in, put your head to the back. Do it in the left side and the right side. Breathe out first, deep breath in. Mm.
shoulder to the back, one to the left, one to the right. your neck on the left to the back to the right right to the back to the left I've also do it with my eyes closed the more and more I do eyes closed better and better I get in my relaxation head down breathe out first take a deep breath in mm. relaxation. Now if you want to breathe now, let's do a breathing, breathing, voluntary regulated breathing. We'll be doing breathing, breathing out longer than breathing in and will slowly and slowly will increase and you will be doing it where you feel comfortable. Don't put any effort in breathing. So comfortably relax your hand. This is called Adhi Mudra, thumb inside. Put it over your knees. We'll be breathing out first. You'll breathe in, a count of two in, one and two in, and count of four out. One and a two and a three and a four. So breathe out first. Breathe in with a count of two in. Breathe out with a count of four out. This is a very easy and I've been doing it for a long, long time. So it became sort of like my normal breathing. But see what happened. Normally our breathing is between 15 to 16 per minute and able to do two seconds in and four seconds out. One cycle becomes six seconds and a breathing rate already dropped down to 10. When breathing rate comes down, your longevity goes up. It is an old grandma's tale, grandma said, you are born with the X number of breath. If you want to live longer, you have to reduce the breathing rate if you do the faster breathing, you die early. And you see it all the time in our nature, in animal world. Animal which is breathing faster, they have a very short lifespan. Animal breathing longer, like a turtle, lives a long, long time. So let's practice since I've been, so I can do it. And if you can do it with me, you'll be fine. Let's do it a four second in and eight second out. So breathe out first. Very easy, very comfortable for me. So let me progress to show it to you. Well, six second in, 12 second out.
wonderful practice. You do get some cough when you're doing it. Entirely normal. Because all the air you're breathing in, it really hits your larynx where the cough is coming from. You'll see when you do the Ujjayi Pranayam, you get a cough. So let's just let me show you this one time. And you keep on doing it. Do it about 5 to 10 breaths. You don't need to do too much in practice. Let me do it 8 seconds in, 16 seconds out. See, always you see what I'm doing. I am breathing out first as much as possible. That means I'm creating a space in my lung, which is a balloon. The balloon needs to be emptied before you can put air in. wonderful practice. I can do it because I've been practicing and I'm doing it. For the middle part of the body, you can sitting down in a chair and sitting in a ground, you can do, put your head down, which is called a yoga mudra. Here you can do hand touching your feet. Take your hand, put your hand on the knee, slowly support yourself, go all the way down. Get your head close to your knee, close your eyes, Breathing out longer than breathing in and stay here between five to ten breaths. Will you slowly get up? For the lower part, if you start with the feet, separate your toes. When you separate your toes, the toe gets relaxed. Breathe in, breathe out. Always keep your toes separated. See, like hand. When a hand is separated, hand is relaxed. When hand is closed, hand is tight. Toes are together. And when you put our feet, we can see. We can see the space in between our toes. The toes relaxed. We can do the ankle relaxation, breathe in. Breathe, always do the breathing. Breathe in, breathe out, breathe in. Rotate your ankle. You know, all the rotations. Many a time, I put my feet, feet high up, take my hand, put it between my toes, and it's a profound level of relaxation. Do it one side, do it on the other side. So this is like a very nice practice. You incorporate your daily practice. Sitting in a chair, you incorporate your eagle pose. Gururasana. Take your one foot on the top. Stay here. Stay here for a while. Slowly as relaxation will set in. You can hold your feet. Bring it on the back. Slowly bring all the way around. You can wrap around. Sit down here and do your day-to-day -day activities, sitting in a chair. Do your newspaper like this. When you're eating, you can even, <laughs> you can do this when you're dining. Remember, when the mind goes away, the body gets relaxed. Relaxes your knee joint, relaxes your hip joint. Remember that the pain comes out from the tightness. It will get rid of your knee pain, hip pain, back pain. It's a wonderful practice. Eagle pose in the chair. How long? Five to ten breaths is very good. Breathing out longer than breathing in. Opposite side, 
easily. You just put it here, slowly and slowly, foot goes back, the day will come, it will go all around, and put your feet like this. Close your eyes. Breathe out longer than breathing in. You can't have any better experience than this. To all the pranayama practice, remember one breath at a time. One breath at a time is a yoga as a therapy. Generally I like to do, even sitting in a chair, we do all the way to the back, your spine straight. I like sitting in the ground and generally I sit down on the other side of this room. This is a room I do all my practice and I put my back against the small wall here. Or there's a cabinet here and keep my spine straight and practice. Okay, let me go down and practice here. Let me move this chair out so I can show it to you. See me better. <clears throat> Every morning, we brush our teeth, we do tongue scraping. We use a tongue scraper, a metallic tongue scraper. We do the tongue scraping and then do a also neti pat. Neti pat is your uh, take a pot, take a little lukewarm water, a little salt there, and put it through one nostril, come through one nostril, then blow your nostril. Do from the other side, close your eyes, breathe through your mouth. I have it all, I've shown it so many times. It is all there on my <coughs> YouTube channel. You'll be able to see how to do it. After you do it, you do a little Kapalbhati Pranayama. Then you come, the first Pranayama is called Bastrika, bellows. What is a bellows? Active inhalation, active exhalation. Normal breathing is your active inhalation, passive exhalation. Exhalation is passive, inhalation is active. Bellows is the one you use to blow your fireplace. And I have a friend who gave me a real bellows, which I have it. Maybe next time it is downstairs. I'll show it to you next time what the real bellows looks like. Bellows are also used by your uh, blacksmith. Okay, so the way to do it, it starts in stages. So this is our health tracker, which we use it all the time, but I'm going to just take it off just to show it to you. The first, for the bellows, a very relaxation, put your hand in a Adhi Mudra. Close your eyes. Breathe out first, and you'll do active inhalation, active exhalation slowly. Let's do it about 10 times. Practice it with me, let's practice. If you want to count, initially a lot of people wants to count. You can count like your 2.5 seconds in, 2.5 seconds out.
a wonderful practice and anybody, people with COPD, people with asthma, any pulmonary problem, they'll be able to do it. Very gentle, active inhalation, active exhalation. We call it, this is the practice for people with disease. In Sanskrit, they call them rogi. In a yoga therapy practice, they transform into people with no disease, called nirogi. Then I had a people with them who is a yogi. So we'll show it to you all the different steps we do the, this bellows breathing. You can do it a hand raised, you can raise your hand high up and the eyes closed when you do an active inhalation and active exhalation, slowly bring it down with the mudra, adhi mudra, thumb inside. What also you can do now is that you keep increasing your rate and frequency so that Vastrika Pranayama has a better and better cleaning effect. What the Vastrika Pranayama does, it removes the carbon dioxide from your body, brings more oxygen in, it's called an aerobic glycolysis. Glucose combines with oxygen from carbon dioxide, water, and called ATP, adenosine triphosphate, which is an energy for us. Carbon dioxide comes out through the lung, water comes out through the kidney. If there is not enough oxygen, we call anaerobic glycolysis. Glucose combines with less oxygen from lactic acid, pyruvic acid, pain producing substances and that is a, a, a misery for us. So for all practical purposes, this Bhastrika Pranayama is your pain relieving Pranayama. Now do a little bit faster now with a little bit of a shoulder shrug. See how to do it. And I do, as I said, all my eyes closed and I put always hand in my, this relaxation of the hand, Adhi Mudra. So I'll do active inhalation and active exhalation. I can do it for a long, long time, but I'll show you a sample, maybe 25 to 50 of them and see how, it, how beautifully we do it. Very nice. I can talk, I can breathe. I'm letting have some little drainage coming out from a nostril because we have some drainage from your morning neti part. But all I want to show you, I'm talking, I'm breathing, I'm totally effortless. In the meantime, also what I do, I change my other foot so I get a little balance back in my body and mind. Now I'll do my balance back. Then I do, I put my hand, I put my hand in between my toes. It's another way to relax. I'm showing it to you how to bring that <coughs> relaxation so you can do a better, a voluntary regulated breathing. At the same Vastrika, same pace, again, Show it to you.
again, I'm having a little drainage, so it's normal that I'm totally effortless in my breathing. And when the practice comes up, when becomes a nirogi or disease free, become a yogi, now become a yogi, what you can do, you can do the bastrika, very rapid bastrika pranayama without any effort. And that will look like this. It very simply, I did 200 of them. I can do it a lot, lot longer. I can do it 400, 500. I'm still effortless. But what happens in the meantime, the whole body is warm. Warm means hot. I'm almost feeling like I may be perspiring. It is that hot, even in this cold temperature. So in the winter time, it's a beautiful practice to increase your body temperature. You will also have some altered sense of consciousness because it causes a cerebral vessel constriction. You will have a circumoral numbness. There will be a little numbness around your mouth. Carpopedal spasm, like tightness in your hands and the feet and also in the neck muscles and back muscles and multiple other syndrome, which is called a hyperventilation syndrome. Entirely normal. Don't get uptight. Only thing you look for, that you are still talking, you are still singing. It's called effortless breathing. You do the same Bastrika Pranayama with the physical movements and with the physical asanas but balancing both sides. Like see if I can do it or do it this way. I will do breathing out first, breathe in, breathe out, like active inhalation. Huh? In a yoga therapy practice, we also balance it in the opposite way. Now what I'll do is the same thing, but we'll breathe in here, breathe out outside. <laughs> keep on doing it. We do it all the time. We do it even our, when you do it our uh, sit-ups and push-ups. Sit-ups, we'll breathe in. We'll go up and down. Up. Wonderful practice. We'll show you about another day how to incorporate Bastrika Pranayam with all of your asanas. <coughs> Same way, like if you do it from the front and back, see? As breathing in, breathing out. I'll do completely opposite though. 
How to breathe in here, breathe out. Balancing the breathing act is a yoga therapy. Would you practice with the hand raised? Would you do a different, would you have different speed? Would you very slow speed? Would you have about 20 of them? Would you medium speed? About another 20. And a rapid speed, you have another 20. That is our one cycle. Then you continue the cycle for about three cycles, four cycles, five cycles. We continue our cycles. And then if you keep doing it like this, you will see that your breathing becomes deeper and deeper and deeper. You can breathe in a large amount of air in and breathe out a large amount of air out. So let me show you one cycle for you to show and you can practice it more and more at home. I generally do three cycles, three to four cycles every day. Your hands will go high up again and you'll pull it down in a slow speed with a 20. When you pull down, be sure you put your thumb inside in Adi Mantra. Slow speed. The medium speed, another 20. To the very rapid speed, another 20. finished one cycle. You do it about three to four cycles daily. You will have a profound level of relaxation and every disease will run away from you. Preparing your lung. Now do Kapalbhati Pranayama. Kapalbhati Pranayama, you bring your awareness to your belly button, push the belly button to the back and it hits the diaphragm hits the lung, all the air comes out. You do not try to breathe in. You breathe in in between every stroke. Every stroke is an active exhalation, passive inhalation, opposite of normal breathing. Normal breathing was active inhalation, passive exhalation. We do with the mudras. This is touching called your dhanu mudra or gano mudra. Quite stern your mind. We'll talk about mudras another day, and I also have a whole session on mudras in my YouTube channel. You can see five elements space, air, fire, water, earth. Thumb down, Vayu Mudra, it controls your pain. When you have pain, you do the pranayama practice like this. Shunda Mudra, Mudra of emptiness. It improves your hearing. Prithivi Mudra, Mudra of your earth for your diabetes and obesity. Varun Mudra, water of your water, improves your bladder function, fluid content, and skin health. Ring finger, little finger, and thumb. We do it a Shakti Mudra, Prana Mudra for your strength. Middle finger, ring finger, and thumb. Apuna Mudra, called Pachun Mudra, Digestion Mudra, Elimination. 
Every high elements in your body gets eliminated through here. Index finger down, is Kalapna Vaya Mudra, Hridaya Mudra, good for your heart. Put your clamps there, thumb high up. Linga Mudra, it also helps your hip. So we do, generally, I do about 50 in each mudra. So I generally do about 10 mudras, I'll do about 500 Kapalbhati Pranaya. Do it very slowly, one stroke. If you're doing it with me, let's do it together. And I'll explain to you what are the benefits and what are the diseases we use this. Kapal Bhati, Kapal is a forehead, but is a shining. It removes all the toxins from your body, so it looks like you have an aura around your face. It looks like you are glowing, and that is called your kapal bhati. Means there is a light around your forehead. Index finger and thumb, spine straight, eyes closed. All your attention to your belly button. Push your belly button to the back. The air will come out through your nostril. If you're new to the practice, you can put your hand in your belly button and hand in the nostril. When you push it in, it's the air comes out. So a lot of people ask me, say, I cannot do it. What should I do? I say, can you cough? Yes, I can cough. Why well, don't you cough? Let me see. <coughs> Great. Can you cough with your mouth closed now? Close your mouth and cough. <coughs> Becomes Kapal Bhati Pranayama. Let's start practicing. Let's do for us the practice. There's a 20 in each mudra. I'll tell you when to switch the mudra. Continue the count, continue the practice. And in the, mid, in the middle, I'll tell you the benefit of this, but you keep on continuing. Touch your index finger and thumb, put it over both of your knees, and keep doing. We'll do 20 in each mudra. Keep doing it. Let me tell you the mechanism. I am doing an exhalation, but I'm not breathing in. I'm breathing in between without knowing. Why? The day I was born, I took a deep breath in. Nobody taught me how to breathe in. Switch your mudra to Vayu mudra. Keep doing it. We don't need to learn how to breathe in. We need to learn how to breathe out. And also, one thing I want to show you now, when you are practicing, you develop a relaxation response, you develop saliva in your mouth. So I've been talking to you for over hour, over an hour, hour 15 minutes, but my mouth is still wet. And the wet mouth means parasympathetic activation secrets saliva. When you have a fear when you have a sympathetic activation, mouth becomes dry. Keep doing it again. Sorry, just to explaining to you, just to show you, mouth, mouth is still very wet. Keep doing it. Let me tell you the benefits. It massages all the internal organs, massages your liver. Massages your stomach, massages your spleen, massages your colon, massages your small intestine, massages your kidneys, massages your pancreas. For women, massages your uterus, massages your tubes, massages your ovaries. 
massages you, for the man massages you, prostate. Change your mudras to Shunna mudra, continue Kapalbhati Pranayama, 20 in each mudra. It massages all the abdominal organs and more and more it massages, better and better the function becomes. Yoga says if you massage an organ, organ function gets better. It also massages your diaphragm. Diaphragm is the muscular chamber between your chest and the abdomen. When it hits the diaphragm, it also massages your lung. Massages the lower part of the lung. So all the air and residual air comes out from your lung, makes a better space for your breathing. Change your mudra to your Prithvi mudra. In between the lung, you have the organ called heart. Very slow Kapalbhati Pranayam, one per second. Change it to Varun Mudra. When the heart gets massaged, heart function gets better. We know when the heart stops, you keep on doing it, let me explain to you. When the heart stops, we do a chest compression from outside. We call it a CPR, cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Kapalbhati Pranayama is our internal CPR. Internally, we are doing cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Touch your little finger, ring finger and thumb, Prana Mudra Shakti Mudra, it gives you strength Wake up in the morning, you don't feel good enough, strong enough, do this mudra, Kapalbhati Pranayama. Pranayama brings the prana in our body for pranic healing. Mudras are also called neurophysical connectors. connects our physical body with the nervous system and in the yogic tradition it also brings the prana to the organ of healing. So a lot of people ask me what do I benefit with the mudras and pranayama together? Mudras and pranayamas together is a synergistic effect Touch your middle finger, ring finger and thumb, Apuna Mudra. It also has an effect on your intracranial pressure. Our brain is covered by a membrane called dura mater, between the brain and the dura mater, you know, there is a lot of layers at there. There is a fluid called cerebrospinal fluid. Cerebrospinal fluid pressure fluctuates with your breathing, primarily with your kapalbhati pranayama. Remember, kapalbhati. 
so it removes all the toxins from your body it brings the tejas prana teja ojas put your index finger down apna vayu mudra or called ridai mudra for your heart We have a prana, teja, and ojas. Let's keep doing it. I'm explaining. Prana is the life force. Cellular communication. Teja, that is our cellular intelligence. That is our agni, our fire inside our body. Ojas is cellular immunity. health is defined as the prana is flowing teja is glowing and oja is building prana has to flow through the channels called dadis pranayama opens up the channels pranayama causes digestion of a toxin called ama when the ama is being digested the all the channel opens up when the channel opens up prana the life force flows freely and in the yoga tradition it not only the lung does the breathing your whole body your skin does breathing your liver does breathing your kidney does breathing do your Linga mudra helps you increasing your body temperature. Also this kapalbhati pranayama and the whole pranayama does the sanskrit words but the beautiful english meaning agni deepan ignites the fire within my body. Ama pachan Ama is your my toxins in my body from undigested food and pachan's been digestion means it digests and destroys all the toxins nadi shodhan nadi is the channel shodhan is the cleansing cleanses all the channels ojo sthapan ojo is your cellular immunity and it increases cellular immunity to cause and prevent us from any exogenous or endogenous disease kapalbhati pranayama practice is a must for daily i do it every day sitting here i do 400 500 also i do it with my i have shown it to you with my leg spread called prasharito uttanasan separating both the feet putting my head down i do kapalbhati pranayama that helps also massaging my pelvic organ pelvic floor and especially for a man who has a prostate problem so ujjayi pranayam kapalbhati pranayam then you practice it a breath holding with called locks called bandhas and also another thing you can do this kapalbhati pranayama when is done very rapidly is called a kriya there are six kriyas pratak nasya dhoti kapalbhati nauli basti so the, the the way the kapalbhati is done as for your kriya will be like this okay effortlessly so three locks first got a chin lock jalandhar bandha keep your neck straight 
Slowly drop your chin down, bring your chin down, bring it close to your chest and stick. What it does, it massages your carotid sinuses, carotid sinuses in both sides of your neck and brings a profound relaxation. It creates a relaxation of the cardiovascular system, nervous system as a daily practice. We incorporate that with a breath holding in inhalation. Breath holding in inhalation is a vagus activation parasympathetic response. Okay, so what it does when you breathe out first, take a deep breath in and hold, the lung starts to expand because you're not breathing out. When it starts to breathe out, then the body has a defense mechanism. Remember, body has a default mode. And it activates the outer layer of the lung with a reflex called a herring brewer reflex. Herring brewer reflex is mediated through the vagus term. So you get a vagal activation. When you get a vagal activation, you get a profound level of relaxation. So with the activation of the carotid sinus and the activation of your vagus nerve, you feel so comfortable. This is called a murcha pranaya. Mucha means you're almost unconscious. So you practice both. You practice both your breath holding in inhalation and breath holding in exhalation. So let me show you what this murcha pranayam is. This is your chin lock with breath holding in inhalation. Sanskrit is called Jalandhar Bandha with Abhuntarin Kumbhak. Abhuntarin means inside. Kumbhak is the breath holding. Sanskrit words, breathing in, inhalation, purak, breath holding in inhalation, abhuntarin kumbhak, exhalation, rechok, and breath holding in exhalation, which we call a suspension, is called vajra kumbhak. So let me show you murcha pranaya. See, always my hand goes back to this Adhi Mudra, even without even knowing, because that's why I've been practicing for so long, the neuroplasticity had set in. Breathe out first. Take a deep breath in. Hold your breath. Drop your chin down and slowly touch your chin to the chest. Hold your breath and keep counting. Always count like one and a two and a three. See how long you can hold. Wonderful practice. It even puts you to sleep. If you have insomnia, practice this. It's a very powerful tool. It's almost like a sleeping meditation. Let's do it one more time. Show it to you. Breathe out first. Take a deep breath in. Hold your breath and do the chin lock.
wonderful practice. Abdominal lock, Udyani band, a powerful tool for your diabetes. In addition to your Kapalbhati Pranayama, that is in a breath holding in exhalation, called a Bajjo Pranayama. Technique is, again, you breathe out first. Remember, all yoga practice, you breathe out first. Take a deep breath in. Completely breathe out. Suck your stomach in and hold. Technique is breathing out first, take a deep breath in, completely breathe out, suck your stomach in and hold as long as you can. Bajju Pranayam, Bajju Kumbhak, we call it a suspension in English. It increases the negative intra-abdominal pressure. It causes better perfusion of the intra-abdominal organs. We also teach these people who has a hernia, people who has a hernia, who does not want to get the surgery done or who is not candidate for a surgery, because hernia pushes out with an increase intra-abdominal pressure. It reduces intra-abdominal pressure so literally sort of a sucks in. So let me show you one more time. I'm showing it to you, but during your practice, you practice about at least five to seven or sometimes 10 times. I practice every single day. Never leave home without practicing this locks, bandhas. Breathe out first. Deep breath in. Completely breathe out. Suck your stomach in and hold. So got the technique, breathe out first, take a deep breath in, breathe out completely. Next to do Agni Sar Kriya, you are relaxed enough, you massage all the abdominal organ with your abdominal wall. Abdominal wall has to be relaxed and abdominal wall has to be free of much <laughs> fatty tissue. We are developing some these days, but this is entirely normal, this is a part of our Little bit of a aging process, huh? Let's do Agni Sar Kriya. So technique will be breathe out first, take a deep breath in, completely breathe out, suck the stomach in and move the abdominal wall to massage the internal organs.
It's a wonderful practice. When you finish the practice, breathe out first, take a deep breath in. You'd be amazed how much air you can breathe in now. You can breathe about two, three, four times to the normal breathing. That is called one breath at a time. One breath, the amount of air you put in, the amount of carbon dioxide comes out. That's the healing property of yoga therapy. That's what yoga therapy, one breath at a time. Abdominal lock, Udhyani one. Agni Kriya, moving the whole abdominal wall, massage the organs. Root lock, you contract your anal sphincter, pull it up with your pelvic floor and the lower part of the body and hold. It's almost like what is called a Kegel maneuver, very good for your pelvic floor function very good for men with a prostate problem and all the anal canal problems like hemorrhoids, fissure, pots. Same technique, breathe out first. Take a deep breath in. Completely breathe out. Contract your anal sphincter, pull it up with the pelvic floor and hold. <coughs> Root lock, abdominal lock, and a chin lock. We never leave home without these practices. We practice all the three locks together, which is called a great lock. And the same thing, I breathe out first, take a deep breath in, completely breathe out. First, I do the root lock, then I do the abdominal lock, incorporate chin lock, and I stay in the pot. So breathe out first, deep breath in, completely breathe out, engage in the root lock, start the abdominal lock, incorporate chin lock. Excuse me. <coughs> so, <coughs> this thing, what we get during little <coughs> drainage, coughing, sneezing, these are all part of our uh, breathing, voluntary regulated breathing, and I am a practice. Don't worry about it. That's what we're doing it at home alone, we practice it. We use our <coughs> elbows, so great look. Then comes your alternate nostril breathing. So alternate nostril breathing is balancing both sides of your brain. Very powerful tool. Remember, see the thing happens for us is our loss of memory, dementia, loss of focus. So left hand with Hana Mudra, right hand, right thumb, close your right nostril, don't close all the way down, just put it just below your nostril. Breathe out through your left nostril. Then breathe in through your left nostril. Close your left nostril with the 
ring finger and little finger and breathe out through your right nostril. Breathe in through your right nostril. Breathe out through your left nostril. It brings a balance between the breathing on both sides. Before that, let's practice one thing. To see the patency of your both nostrils. Throughout the whole day, the breathing shifts from one nostril to another nostril. We say about 90 minutes to two hours, it shifts. It's our observation. So I want to do a breathing through my left nostril, breathing through my right nostril. And the best way to do it is to do Kapalbhati Pranayam through one nostril. Like my right nostril is closed, I'm doing my left nostril Kapalbhati Pranayama and to see the effect of it. will be doing it see when you don't get any drainage from your nostril when you don't have, it means your nasal cavities are not cleaning up then I do it here see the patency of my left nostril now I'll do the right nostril again Do the patience of my right nostril. I'm sort of fairly open on both sides. Now, when do the alternate nostril breathing? It open up more. Let me show the steps of alternate nostril breathing, and I'll show you the breath holding with alternate nostril breathing. Right nostril is closed. Breathe out through your left nostril. Breathe in through your left nostril. Close your left nostril, breathe out your right nostril. Breathe in through your right nostril. Breathe out your left nostril. Now put your index finger and middle finger in between eyebrows and third eye. Close your eyes, bring your awareness at the third eye. And also to the balance, use your left hand to hold into your right ear low. This is called your super brain yoga. And it balances both sides of the brain. Keep on doing alternate nostril breathing and I'll tell you the benefit of that. Left nostril is controlled by the right brain. Right brain is intuitive. Right brain is female. Right brain is cooling. Right brain is parasympathetic. Left nostril breathing is called a Chandra Nadi, moon energy, Ida Nadi, parasympathetic tone. Right nostril is controlled by the left brain. Left brain is analytical. Left brain is male. Left brain is heating. Left brain is sympathetic. Right nostril breathing is called sun energy, suranari or sympathetic. It activates both sides of the brain bring a balance between your right and left side of your body. 
improves your focus, powerful tool for the treatment of your dementia, Alzheimer's disease, is a wonderful tool for your hypertension. Continue this as long as you can do without any effort in your breathing. When you can do without any effort, generally you do between five to 10 minutes of alternate nostril breathing. In a daily practice of one hour of practice, we do 25 minutes of asanas, 25 minutes of pranayama, and 10 minutes of meditation. So, <clears throat> if do your bellows, bastrika, kapalbhati, breath of fire, alternate nostril breathing, daily practice. Incorporating your locks, daily practice, breath holding, both in inhalation and exhalation. You also practice breath holding with your alternate nostril breathing in a ratio of one is to four is to two. Like you will do a four second in, 16 second hold, eight second out through alternate nostril breathing. Then slowly when you can do it more and more than you can do, you can increase. You will do five second in, 20 second hold, 10 second out. Six second in, 24 hold. We are doing it, we can do even a 10 in, 40 hold and 20 out. Let me do it just about two examples, just to show it to you. What I'm doing here, I'm showing you all the examples, but when you practice, you practice it a little longer at home. You do a mudra called a Vishnu mudra. You put your index finger, middle finger down and create a pinch with your little finger, ring finger and thumb. Bring the pinch here, breathe out through your left nostril. Breathe in through the left nostril with a count of four in. Hold your breath for a count of 16. Breathe out with a count of eight. Breathe in with a count of five in. Hold for count of 20. Breathe out with a count of 10 out. Wonderful practice. Generally, we do it daily for about five to 10 times, breath holding. And again, you do it on as long as you have any effortless breathing. You do Brahmri Pranayam. Brahmri Pranayam quiets down your mind. Also, you do a called Pranavo Pranayam, which is the A U Ma, and that is called Meditative Pranayam. There's a lot of Meditative Pranayam, but that Pranayam takes you to the level of meditation. They can do alternate nostril breathing without closing your nostril. I've shown it to you before a lot of times, but it's also meditative. So we'll finish with that Pranavo Pranayam. The next Pranayam is called Ujjayi Pranayam. Ujjayi Pranayam is called your, the breath holding and resistive inhalation. It constricts your larynx. The larynx is supplied by two branches of the vagus nerve, one called superior laryngeal nerve, one is called inferior laryngeal nerve, which is a branch of the vagus nerve. When you constrict slowly and gently, it stimulates the vagus nerve, causes vagal activation. It sends a signal through your brainstem, and the brainstem sends a signal through your your 
called the cranial nerves, sends a signal to your hypoglossal nerve, it pushes the tongue in front, it helps in your sleep apnea. Glossopharyngeal nerve, it sends a signal to your palatopharyngeus and palatoglossus muscle, tightens up soft palate, it's a therapy for your snoring. And with that also, you do a, when you do that in relaxation, you do a, your abdominal lock. Then you incorporate that with your chin lock and left nostril breathing. Vega stimulation, carotid sinus stimulation, and again, the cooling right brain stimulation. Cannot be in a better practice than this. Let me show it to you one time and see. And in a practice before what to do with your pranayam, you can do it very gently like this. The massage is also your <coughs> thyroid gland, very good for thyroid. So breathe out first. Take a deep breath in. Completely breathe out. Did you notice that? When I'm doing Ujjayi Pranayam, my abdominal wall goes in. <coughs> Remember when you get a cough, that means you're affecting Ujjayi Pranayam very well. Can you see that? When I'm doing it, it goes in. So I'll do abdominal lock, chin lock, left nostril breathing. Let me do one more time. Breathe out first. Deep breath in. Completely breathe out. Think about it. Vagal activation, carotid sinus activation, right brain activation. Improve your breathing power by called resistive exhalation, called a conch shell breathing. When you blow a conch shell, it causes resistive exhalation. So you do our yogic fist, Adhi Mudra, put one in the top. You never breathe through your mouth. You always breathe through your nostril. You know, when you breathe through your nostril, it goes through your nose. Nose is a filter. Nose is also a personal air conditioner. Outside air is warm, it'll cool it down. Outside air is cold, it'll warm it up. Air goes to the side of the nostril, called a turbinate. Then it goes through the lung. When you breathe through your mouth, you don't know where the air has gone. Gone to your stomach into your lung. But if you have to breathe through your mouth, you can always breathe in through your nostril, breathe out through your mouth. But we'll do some mouth breathing, like this is one called Shankha Pranayam. We'll do it called Sitali Pranayam, Sitkari Pranayam. Those who do it for your getting an effect of it. But here, breathe out first. Take a deep breath in. Breathe through your mouth against resistance.
We show a few other examples of the pranayamas which you have. We do it. Sitali pranayama. Quiet style, quiet cools our body. Roll your tongue out. Breathe in through your old tongue. Close your mouth, breathe out through your nostril. Within a few breaths, you feel a profound level of cooling inside. Very good for people with gastroesophageal reflux, women with hot flushes, people with pitta disease, cardiac disease. If you cannot take your tongue out, you can do it with your teeth with a sitkari pranayam. And you see how cool it gets all inside the body. Let's finish. We'll finish with meditative pranayam, what is called your bumblebee breathing, basrika pranayam. We call it pranaho pranayam, a uma pranayam. In a bumblebee breathing, basrika or a <coughs> brahmri pranayam, shut down your five senses, then you create a vibration like a bumblebee. Brain is a state of vibration. Two vibration interacts, cancels, called a harmonic resonance. I've shown it so many times to you. Let me show you one more time as a demonstration. Put your index finger in the forehead, three fingers to close your eyes, use your thumb to close your ear, close your mouth. Breathe out first, breathe through your nostril and breathe out with the sound of a bumblebee. Take your hands, keep rubbing your hands, keep rubbing your hands. This is called thumbing and cupping. When you feel the warmth in your hand, if you're wearing glasses, remove your glasses, then make a cup in your hand, put it over your eyes, then all the eyes take all the heat, eyes take heat up from your hand. It's a relaxation of the ciliary muscles. Then massage your forehead, massage the ear, go behind your ear, in front of your ear, the triggers, these are called auricular branch of the vagus nerve. It activates vagus nerve. Massage all the muscles. The muscles in the face are attached to the skin. Massage is your carotid sinus here in the back. It's a wonderful practice. Brahmri pranayam, bumblebee. Most meditative pranayam is your pranaho pranayam. A comes from the lower part of the lung. U comes from the middle part of the lung. Ma comes from the upper part of the lung. When your lower part of the lung fills up, your abdominal walls are generally goes up. When the middle one, the chest expands, and when the upper part, your clavicle rises. You do it the three mudras. This is called your, this is generally called a dhyana mudra, but on a hand turn, it's called a chin mudra. It opens lower part of the lung. When it closes the hand, it's called a chinmai mudra, it opens the middle part of the lung, and you put the thumb inside and close. It's called Adhi Mudra, opens upper part of the lung. So start with the Chin Mudra. It will be Ah. So breathe out first, so breathe in and breathe out with the sound of a Ah, the lower part of the lung. Eyes closed, breathe out first. Uh... 
चिन्मय मुद्रा उ Slowly bring your hands in front of your body, touch your little finger and a thumb, separate your ring finger, middle finger and index finger. Padma Mudra, it connects your body, mind and spirit. Slowly bring it close to your heart, heart is the side of your soul. Yoga therapy is a one breath at a time. Improve your lung function, improves your heart function improve your brain function, improve your cellular function, causes the cellular healing. Slowly bring your hands again in front of your heart chakra, do the pumping and cupping to finish. Keep doing it, this doing it for, for as many times as you can, you will see, you will see that none of the yogis wear glasses, including myself. If you're wearing glasses, remove your glasses, Put your hands over the eyes like a cup. Let the eyes take all the heat from your hand. Massage your forehead. Massage your eyes. Massage your face. Massage your ear in the back, in the front, in the tragus, in the, all the way in the front. Massage your carotid sinus in the back. Wonderful practice. Thank you <clears throat> staying with us. This was the yoga therapy, one breath at a time, and surely, to, you know, after this, you will do what is called yogic breathing, three steps breathing. Breathe out first. You will see lower part, middle part, upper part. The three part of the lung expands when you can do a, a three part breathing. That is your sign of your health. Okay. Thank you. We'll be back again next Saturday for another session. If you have any request, let me know and I will try to fulfill your request. Thank you again. See you next Saturday.